Unlike most characters I cover, Meliodas isn't someone I view as having tremendous character growth, but that doesn't mean he isn't a fascinating character to analyze. Meliodas is a slave to love, and throughout this video, I'm going to explain why that's tragic. You're probably asking yourself, isn't love a good thing? Absolutely, but so is freedom, until your freedom starts encroaching on others. Just ask Aaron Yeager. If you place your affection for someone above everything else, there can certainly be negative consequences to that, which is exactly what we see with Meliodas. So let's start from the beginning. In Seven Deadly Sins, we never really learned a ton about who he was prior to meeting Elizabeth, but what we do know is that from the moment moment they meet, all his actions are dictated by his simping, I mean love, for her. Meliodas is the son of the Demon King and the leader of the Ten Commandments, the most fearsome army of the demon race. Elizabeth is the daughter of the Supreme Deity, the head of the goddess race. Demons and goddesses are mortal enemies, and these two give us our Romeo and Juliet romance, which, based on the other historical references in the series, I'm guessing isn't an accident. This forbidden love results in Meliodas betraying his race, killing two of the Ten Commandments in the process, and igniting a holy war that not only pits demons against goddesses, but fairies, giants, and humans are all dragged into it too. As I said, the primary cause of the betrayal and this entire war is his love for Elizabeth. Knowing this makes the curse he receives all the more tragic. When the holy war ends, both Meliodas and Elizabeth are cursed by their parents. For Meliodas, he receives the curse of immortality. Elizabeth's curse is that she is mortal and will be reincarnated after every death. However, However, unlike Meliodas, she will not remember her past lives, and if she does, she will die three days later. So in essence, Meliodas is cursed to an eternity of rewatching his beloved die time and time again, and it'll always be right when she's remembering him. If he does happen to die, he'll be resurrected, but his emotions will be transferred to his father, with each death making him more like the cold-blooded demon he used to be before he fell for Elizabeth, making him a useful pawn to the Demon King once again. Despite knowing all of this, for 3,000 years, whether by fate, curse, or choice, he can't stay away from her, and watches her die over a hundred times. If your entire life was dictated by the immense love you felt for one person, and all you do is see them die repeatedly, it's hard to think of a more miserable existence, and we see glimpses of this with Meliodas. There's a moment where in a flashback, they talk about death, and he basically says, he's tried offing himself, but it doesn't work. Or in Istar, when no matter what he does, he can't get over Liz's death, and each time he witnesses her die, his wrath envelops the area. He's told that to pass his trial and get his power back, he basically has to get over, and he can't. Though he is able to channel his wrath more appropriately after this. Also, after watching the whole series, it's funny how every single reincarnation of Elizabeth looks exactly the same, except Liz. And also it's funny because when Meliodas gets his power powers back, he immediately fakes being evil. Just so entertaining. Anyway, it's hard to blame him. If you were cursed to an eternity of chasing the thing you loved most, only for it to fall apart right when it came within your grasp, what would you do? There's no way out. The only ways to live are either winning this Elizabeth over while trying to delay her memories returning, or having some sort of hope of eventually fixing things, even if that borders on insanity. When Elizabeth regains her memories during the series, the first time we witness it firsthand, he's had enough. His emotions have drained, and he's seen her die too many times. Meliodas decides the only way to end this cycle is to become the Demon King himself, which will allow him to break their curses. In doing so, he abandons his emotions, his friends, and everything dear to him, because at the end of the day, he's a slave to his affection for Elizabeth, and is willing to sacrifice anything for it. It's remarkably selfish for a shonen protagonist. Thematically, it's fitting that as a demon, his commandment was was love. And here we see the downside of his desperation to be with Elizabeth, because when he betrays the sins, absorbs the commandments, and gains the power to become the Demon King, all he did was open up his body to become a vessel for his father. If not for his friends, his emotions would have deteriorated into nothing in purgatory. His body would have been overtaken by the Demon King for good, 
and everyone he ever cared about, Elizabeth included, would have been wiped out. But that's the underlying beauty of the story. Meliodas' immense love for Elizabeth pushes him to the brink, and it's the love his friends and Elizabeth have for him that saves him. And while the execution of this, especially in the anime, fell hard as the series went along, the idea behind it all is strong. But he was great long before this, because well before we knew his story, he was simply a lot of fun to watch. And I understand that's not going to be the case for everyone, because let's be honest, amongst main characters in popular anime series, he's one of the most perverse. To me, I've found a lot of it to be comedic, like how impressed he is when he watches Hauser unintentionally say dirty things in Visal. However, another one of my favorite characters is a genocidal maniac, so maybe there's just something wrong with me. Getting back to the sin of wrath, there's a fun juxtaposition with that being his sin because it's hidden behind a facade that he's the most chill character in the show and always goofing around. He's blunt with a strong sense of justice, but also empathetic and forgiving, which he needs to be because he also has a lot he needs to be forgiven for. He's a terrible cook and seemingly proud of it. To put up with everything he did for 3,000 years and still come off cheerful, even if part of its affront is a massive testament to his mental fortitude, it would have been nice to see more of his past before Elizabeth and see more of the growth of his character. There's a lot of little cool details with the character too. His dragon tattoo represents infinity, which is in reference to his lifespan and his unchanging look. I've always personally enjoyed that while extreme liberties were taken with how we got there, Meliodas' story does follow the Arthurian legend of his namesake, where he ends up up as king, married to Elizabeth with Tristan as his son, and it is kind of symbolic that this man who's burdened by the pain of eternal torment reflects his pain onto others and bottles up his pain before using it against his opponents with his two biggest moves, full counter and revenge counter. The way his fights are handled in the first two seasons are amazing. Yes, he's the strongest character in the show, Hugh the Escanor fans riding, but he's constantly utilized in situations that keep each battle fresh. And there are enough different obstacles thrown his way that he succumbs to. His catalog of fights with Helbrum and Visal, Hendrickson along with the other Sins, the Albion alongside Arthur, the Ten Commandments by himself, Fraudrin exposing the old him, and Belion in the movie are great. And that's with two wasted seasons of poorly animated slop keeping that list from being a lot longer. His relationships and interactions with the Seven Deadly Sins are one of the main reasons I love the show so dearly early on. Watching them hang out, even with nothing going on, was one of the best parts of the series. He always treated Deanne as a true comrade despite being a giant, and while she had a massive crush on him early on, his refusal to reciprocate showed he only had eyes for Elizabeth, but he'd tease her regardless. With King, he was always kind of the punching bag, and that, along with the realization that Meliodas is a demon led King to question him and his allegiances, which was an interesting dynamic that stood out amongst the sins. Obviously, he and Gother go way back as both were Ten Commandments, and he kind of has to keep Gother in check until his memories return. Meliodas even had a strong bond with the original Gother. With Merlin, it's a complex relationship where they are more aware of each other's past than the other sins. While Meliodas will speak openly with her about things he normally wouldn't, he also seems to be more wary of her than the others, wondering when she's up to something. He and Escanor have great mutual respect as individuals and as warriors. His relationship with Bon is probably my favorite in the show. Not only are they ridiculously entertaining, like when they have an arm wrestling match that destroys a castle and magical barrier, or when they're comparing their women while accidentally killing demons in the process, but there's genuine appreciation and support there. When we first see Bon, he has a cool loner vibe to him, but when Meliodas arrives, he immediately becomes a giddy child and they play patty cake. Against the Ten Commandments, Meliodas is on the verge of death and Bon essentially has to choose between saving his friend or his resurrected lover, and they mutually agree that he needs to go save Meliodas. This is particularly meaningful because earlier on in the show, Bon attempted to betray Meliodas to resurrect her, so being able to make up for his past mistake adds more weight to it. When Meliodas is most emotions get trapped in purgatory, Bon is the one who goes there to get those emotions back, which takes him 720 years. Oh, 
and when he finds Meliodas, he doesn't have a way out, which just adds to the banter. There's also the relationship with Zeldris, which seems to mirror his own in doing everything he can to reunite with his lover, but Zeldris has the added motivation of feeling betrayed by Meliodas, a guilt Meliodas holds on to and strives to make up for. From start to finish, Meliodas's actions were compelled by one thing. It was all for love. He embodies all the traits of a hero while simultaneously being as flawed a protagonist as you'll see in Shonen. Yet along the way, Meliodas was one of the silliest and most entertaining characters to ever grace fiction, and for that, I'm grateful.